Hi YouTube, this is Raven. Um, I want to talk a little bit about PTSD and triggers for PTSD. Uh, PTSD stands for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. And I read an article in the Huffington Post about how that sometimes um, high conflict divorces can cause um, PTSD symptoms, in, especially in the spouse that's being legally abused or just abused by the, the other spouse in some way or another. And normally PTSD is something that we refer to as a stress reaction um, to a traumatic event. And normally it would be reserved for um, soldiers coming home from war or firemen or policemen who experience traumatic events um, quite frequently. Um, but I noticed um, early on in this divorce that I was developing PTSD symptoms. And it was a reaction to the stress and the traumatic event of my narcissist husband ripping the mattress of our bed off with me in it, um, pounding the mattress, threatening to do me bodily harm, then putting a loaded shotgun in his mouth and threatening to kill himself. And these symptoms started about a week after um, he got out of the mental hospital and his parents and friends came over with a moving van to take our stuff. And after they left, I was sitting down at my desk because I'm a transcriptionist. I um, work from home. And I was trying to type, and my heart just started racing, and I couldn't get it to stop. Um, it, it stayed like that for about an hour. It was racing at like 100 beats per minute, and I'm a runner, so my resting heart rate is normally about 50. So you can imagine if it's beating it twice what it's supposed to, you know, how bad that's making me feel. And I felt so bad, I thought that I was going to have to go to the emergency room. And so I finally lay down on the floor in the fetal position and lay there for about an hour and I finally got my heart to stop beating so fast. But th those symptoms continued every time um, his lawyer tried something or I got a phone call from him or an email, you know, I would have to change my ringtone and my text tone because every time I heard it, it was like a Pavlovian response that I would just, my heart would start racing, um, I would shake all over, I, I just, I would have a panic attack. And today I was kind of reminded of that. I had a trigger, and a trigger is something that can cause these symptoms. And it can be anything from, you know, a song, it could be a sight of someone, um, just anything, you know, driving through an old neighborhood. And my trigger was getting uh, served with divorce papers today. I mean, I've been expecting that he's going to file for divorce um, for a while because it's been over a year since we've been separated. But the sight of seeing his signature on the summons and his lawyer's name, because his lawyer's been abusing me for over a year, um, caused a panic attack. And I thought that I was past that. And apparently I'm not. I still have triggers. And seeing his name and his signature um, triggered a panic attack. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about some of the symptoms of PTSD, because if you're going through a high-conflict divorce, you might notice this, these things are happening. And at the time, when it first started, I had a friend who had been through divorce, and she kept telling me, you just need to suck it up. You need to deal with it. You can't let this, you can't let this narc, you know, cause these symptoms in you. And I couldn't explain to her that, you know, this was my body reacting. I had no control over it. You know, it's just seeing his name or seeing an email or a text just caused, you know, a panic attack. And I pulled up a list of, you know, some of the common symptoms. Um, one is flashbacks, where you relive the event. And, you know, I was reliving the event constantly in my mind of him with a gun in his mouth trying to kill himself. Um, nightmares. I would have nightmares frequently where instead of trying to convince him to not kill himself, I had run into the other room, got my daughter up, um, grabbed my son in my arms, and I'm running down the stairs. And then I feel a sharp pain in my back because he shot me. And I'm fall then I'm falling down the stairs. Or I would have another dream where I'm trying to call 911. You know, saying my husband's trying to kill himself. And instead, you know, he grabs the phone and he, you know, just like crushes in his hand like Terminator or something. Um, 
intense physical reactions to reminders of the event, uh, pounding heart, rapid breathing, nausea, muscle tension, sweating. Um, I already covered that. Um, avoiding activities, places, thoughts, or feelings that remind you of the trauma. Um, yeah, I try to avoid going into our old neighborhood. I had to drop a friend of my daughter's off um, a couple weeks ago, and it, it triggered things to drive through the old neighborhood. Um, loss of interest in activities and life in general. Feeling detached from others and emotionally numb. Um, irritability or outbursts of anger. Um, I've had a lot of times where I just want to scream at the top of my lungs. Uh, I want to hit something, you know, because I'm just so angry and I don't know how to deal with it. Um, difficulty concentrating. Hypervigilance. Um, I had an incident where I was hypervigilant all the time because I was worried the narc was going to try and hire someone to kill me. And there was one night someone fired off some shots in our backyard and I freaked out. I like hit the floor. I'm doing the low crawl like I'm in the, you know, in basic training again, you know, crawling under barbed wire and they're shooting bullets over our heads. And then I thought, you know, stupid, your kids are sleeping three feet above you right now in their beds. You know, if someone's shooting, you might want to go grab them and pull them to the floor. And, you know, my father and I the next day looked for the shell casings. We could never find, find them because we live on 40 acres. But, you know, I, I was very hypervigilant at that point, thinking that the narc was going to try and kill me because it would be easier to kill me than to, you know, pay for a divorce. Um, feeling jumpy and, jumpy and easily start, startled. Um, anger and irritability. Guilt, shame, or self-blame. Substance abuse. You know, that's a, that's a big one, you know, because when you're going through a high-conflict divorce, you know, you think about turning to other substances, and that's not a good idea. Feelings of mistrust and betrayal. Yeah, I, I don't trust anyone these days. I, I have a lot of trust issues. Depression and hopelessness. Um, I've been depressed a lot over the last year. Suicidal thoughts and feelings. Feeling alienated and alone and physical aches and pains. Yeah, I was you know, sick a lot over this past year. You know, I had an eye infection that, you know, took two antibiotics to cure. Um, I got bronchitis, pneumonia, and, you know, I think it was all a stress reaction to what's going on. So I can say that if you are in a high conflict divorce, you know, take care of yourself. If you start having, you know, these PTSD symptoms, you might want to, you know, see a healthcare professional. Maybe they can prescribe something to help you through it. They can give you some tactics, um, some strategies to help you manage your stress. Um, but, you know, take care of yourself, you know, do what you have to do to make sure that your mental well-being is, is good and you're, you're able to, to stand up to the fight. Because if you're in a high-conflict divorce, it gets messy and it can take a toll on your, your health. And you need to look out, out for yourself. Alright, that's all for now. Be vigilant. Take care.